The second element or the second step is creating a driving question. This is very similar to an essential question or a problem statement. But what it is, is a very specific question that is used to guide the inquiry in the project. It, it helps very much if you have Actually, several teachers to talk summer, about a driving question and get different here. points of view. And the best driving good? questions result from this brainstorming good? process that's required before you settle on one question. Something about the component parts and what happens if you, if you have a system, what's the role of the individual parts of the system and what happens if you remove one of those parts? So like if you look at watershed in Indian Valley and you look at one component and you look at the impact of an individual component that's been removed or altered, that you could transfer that same understanding to the watershed of the Rio Grande in the, in the, or the Colorado River or something like that. Or possibly other systems. Or to other systems, like a human. Okay, or a human, or another system. system. Right. There's a sense of, can you take lessons learned at a local scale and apply them to larger scale issues? I want something in there about components of systems and variables. They're going to be looking at a watershed that works right, and then things basically that are introduced into a watershed that, that upset that. And you change one thing, mm -hmm. and it's possible. That and does it fall apart or not? Right. Mm -hmm. or, or if you change one thing by adding something else, does it, if things could fall apart or not. I heard that this was getting close. What can we learn from the study of watersheds about systems and interconnectedness? I, yeah, it's, I think we're getting there. And, I just, I, st I still, I don't just want us to create a question that we don't have the students sit down and answer at the end of this. Mm -hmm. And and it's an it's an answer that's mm -hmm. meaningful and also allows for different interpretations. It's got. I think it's got to be a, a question <coughs> that is literally answered by the by the, the final product that they produce. Right. So a good essential question would do that. Do Do you feel like there's a that there, there's an answer to this? I mean, what's wrong with driving questions like, what is the state of the watershed at IVC, and how does that compare to other watersheds in the Bay Area? P you know, question mark. But we also want them to understand the watershed symbolically as something more mm -hmm. than a stream and the area surrounding it. So we want to ask a driving question that gets them to discover that relationship. In order to make that happen, you have to have an increasingly abstract question. Is that really serving mm -hmm. our ninth graders mm -hmm. if we're really trying to improve really specific skills? In this case, we, we've talked a lot about how we want to improve reading and writing skills at a certain standard or um, scientific reasoning skills, et, et cetera. You're going to have to do a better job of improving skills, perhaps, if the question is really specific and focused. And the concreteness of it for a ninth grader could really lead to improved like structuring of a, an essay or improved putting together of a science report. And I think there's different levels of the questions. You can have a driving question that's broad enough that it can be cross-disciplinary. You can be asking, so what's the role of the, you know, the individual component? And what happens when you take that out? I mean, anybody within a, any discipline could, could contemplate that and kids could have to explore it. It, it keeps it in a concrete, manageable piece for the kids. So at the end, they could say, this is what I learned about the watershed. This is the state of the watershed. You can start to ask smaller questions like, so what are you learning about the systems and how are they interconnected? And, and make those journal questions that they ponder. I thought that conversation was really rich and powerful in our development as a, a team and, our, and for the teachers' understanding of developing projects because they were building on what they had learned from the first couple projects that they had done that the questions seemed too, um, they didn't connect to the product uh, well enough, and they were larger questions that required maybe more metacognition that the students were ready for. And so as we were able to really drill down to a very simple question of what's the state of our watershed and how does that compare to other watersheds? We're really, I mean, I feel like we're really, we're really close. Well, I, yeah. I mean, is I that think, close think, enough? Yeah, it's close enough. Now. I think I said, what is the state of the IVC watershed? And how does it compare to other Bay Area watersheds? Can we live with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right.